Hi, this is Mike. I wanted to follow up on some tests that I've been doing with the filter smusher. So as I've covered in earlier videos, I designed the filter smusher after talking with some folks on the Discord uh, that were really excited about the fellow StagX dripper. It's a dripper with a robust design. It's uh, really solidly built and it has stainless steel dual walls which really promote heat retention even in stock and it will produce some really solid cups. But something that has gotten quite a bit of traction lately with the release of another brewer, the Tricolet, is the concept of no bypass brewing, where instead of allowing water to bypass the coffee bed through the sides of the filter, water is instead forced to go through the coffee bed to maximize extraction. Last year, Jonathan Gagne wrote an article on how to approach no bypass brewing on a Stag X, and I've linked to the article in the description below. In the article, he describes a method to press the pleats of the Stag X filter against the walls of the dripper to limit bypass. And because of the dual wall design, brew temperature was stable throughout the brew. Some things he found with this process, however, were that making the brewer no bypass would make it more likely to clog. He mitigated this by adding a screen to the bottom of the dripper keep the filter from creating a seal at the bottom and choking the brew. Also, because he was pressing the pleats and seating the filter on the screen manually with his hands, it was difficult to make the brew repeatable, and uh, he saw increased variability in the TDS of his cups. So, after reading this article and chatting with some coffee people on Discord, I thought that a tool could help solve both of these issues. That brings us to the filter smusher. It's been through a few design changes and improvements covered in previous videos, but I think that I've landed on design that I'm happy with and that I'd like to share. It can help repeatedly press out the pleats in the filter and also keep the bottom of the filter from sealing against the bottom of the brewer and choking the brew. But can it increase extraction through no bypass? That's what I wanted to find out. To test this, I set up two brews, one with unpressed stock Stag X filters and the other brew with pressed filters to make them more no bypass. For these tests, I tried to keep as much of the brews as constant as possible and ran multiple trials to measure consistency. Here we took four unpressed filter brews and also four filter smusher brews. I used 10 grams of coffee and aimed for 166.7 grams of water. So this is a typical 60 grams of coffee to one liter ratio. For the brew, I started with a 45 second bloom and then subsequently broke out the remaining water into four pours. The total brew time was between three minutes, 35 seconds and four minutes, three seconds. I weighed the final brew, and then I also used a refractometer to measure the TDS and calculate the extraction yield. After these back-to-back to back brews and compiling all the data, here's what I found. The TDS for unpressed filters came in at a respectable 1.41% with a 0.07% variability, and the cups themselves were typically tasty for pour over coffee. In comparison, the TDS for the filter smusher coffee came in at a whopping 1.64%, also with a 0.07% variability. This coffee was very intense, but surprisingly not bitter nor astringent, which you would associate with over extraction. And because of the number of trials, the difference of 0.23% TDS between unpressed and smush filters was statistically significant. We can also see this in the extraction yield. The extraction yield for unpressed filters was at 19.9% with 1.3% variance. And the filter smusher coffee had an extraction yield of 23.5%, with a 1% variance, or 3.6% higher extraction yield than the unpressed filter, and this was also statistically significant. But 
The question is, were the increases in TDS and extraction yield due to no bypass? Maybe. For example, if the brew times were significantly higher for press filters, that may account for the increased extraction. However, looking at the brew times, the average brew time for the unpressed filters was 3 minutes 46 seconds, and for pressed filters, 4 minutes 1 second. This was only a difference of 15 seconds, and the difference was not statistically significant. Also, over-extracted coffee is usually harsh and bitter, and the filter smoosher coffees with their slightly longer times were neither. But to prove definitively that this is in fact no bypass would take tools that I just don't have. So let's call this limited bypass. So, is it worth it to use a tool to press out the pleats in a fellow Stag X? I think so. It can consistently increase the extraction and provide for some interesting coffee. And if you're looking for a more traditional tasting pour over coffee, you can do so with longer ratios. Depending on the coffee, I've been using ratios between 1 to 18 and 1 to 20, which on a V60 or stock Stag X would be very weak and watery, but were vibrant and sweet on the filter smusher. That means by taking advantage of no bypass, you can get away with using fewer grams of coffee per batch for the same final brew volume. And as an added benefit, I've been using several different filters to really test out the versatility of the Stag X with the filter smusher, using filters such as the trapezoidal filters, V60 cone filters, and supermarket batch brew filters. Stay tuned for future shorts showing if these filters worked out or not. And lastly, you can get rid of that dosing coat. So with that, I'll sign off. If you'd like to download the file for the filter smusher and try some no bypass, I mean limited bypass, brews for yourself, click on the link in the description below for the 3D printable file on Thingiverse. And with that, I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. I need to start getting rid of all this strong coffee, probably over ice. <laughs>